good afternoon i think it's time for another video on our channel so today we want to do something different uh, it's mathematics but also some statistics so to motivate the topic we have for today uh, let's consider the following problem i hope you can see this um, there's a jar with some beads and the problem is to count or estimate the number of beads in this jar so how are we going to do this well a naive method is to actually count them all one by one uh, but that is probably boring tiring and very tedious right we don't want to do it so what are some other ways in which you can come up with uh, an educated guess for the number of beads in this jar and that's the problem we're going to focus today physics certainly offers some solutions so maybe you can uh, carefully measure the weight of each bead and also calculate the total weight of all the beads and then uh, divide the total weight by the weight of each bead and that's going to give you an estimate uh, for the number of beads. Okay, those are some uh, classical methods uh, and today we're going to talk about a different method which is called capture and release technique. Would you like to say that? Yeah. So basically, you would take the jar and you would take out an amount. Let's call the, we'll take out a sample. So let's call that S for sample. And then we'll um, mark them or replace them with a different color. And then we'll put them back into the jar. And then we'll mix it up and then take out the same amount as a sample again. So then um, in those, we'll see how many have the marking or the replaced bead. We'll see how many are how many are a different color, and then that and then we'll set up a proportion for that. That's right. So the capture and release technique, and the value that we want to estimate is capital and the total number of beads in the jar, and the idea, as explained by Shloka, is that the proportion of marked beads in the total population, which is all beads in the jar, can be approximated or estimated by the proportion of marked beads in the sample that we draw. So here are the numbers. N is what you want to find, the total number of beads in the jar. And we marked M of them. Let's say M was 150. And then you draw a sample after randomizing, little s, again 150, to keep things simple. Of those 150 that you have drawn in the randomized sample, find the number of beads that have the desired color, the marked beads. So let's say that's R. And now you have this simple equation. R over S is M over N. There are four quantities. And the only one that we don't know is N. All the remaining three can be computed. And when you cross multiply, you get R times N equals S times M. From there, you get a formula for N, which is approximately S times M over R. And once again, S is the sample that we have drawn from the randomized pool. M is the number of beads in the population that have been marked. And R is the number of beads in the samples of size S that have the desired color. So that is your formula. All right, let's actually do this experiment to estimate the number of beads in this jar using the capture release technique. So I'm going to take out 150 beads from here. So let's count 150. One, two, three. There you go. So these are 150. I'm going to set them aside. And instead of marking all of them with a different color, which would be too much of work, I have here 150 beads which are of yellow color. I'm going to mix them here into the population. The next step is to shuffle, jiggle, and make sure they get completely randomized here. And we make sure we do this reasonably well because that's going to uh, be very crucial for the success of this experiment. All right, here we have uh, completely randomized. The yellow beads are completely mixed up. 
So now from this, I'm going to draw, let's say another 150 and count the number of beads with the color yellow. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four. So here is the sample that we have drawn of size 150 from the randomized jar. And in this jar, we need to count the number of yellow beads. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so we got 10 of them. So now let's uh, plug in the numbers here. And we got for M, the number of mark beads, that was 150. And the sample that we have drawn is also 150. And the value of R was 10. Now that tells me that N is 150 times 150 over 10, which is approximately, which, which is 2,250. So that is an estimate for the number of beads in the jar. So here are some applications of the caption and release idea. You might think that because it's just beads, it's just like not used in real life, but it is. Because ecologists have used it to find the uh, population size of an animal species. And they can um, make an estimate to how many um, of that animal there is. Right, it could be, for instance, estimating the number of lions in the Kruger National Park or some kind of fish in Lake Michigan of that sort. Yeah, and how they do it is first they'll take a sample of the animals and they will put like tags or collars or marks on the animal and they will release it back into the natural habitat, yes. And then it will mingle, and at a later date, um, they'll come back and take the same amount. It doesn't have to be same. Uh, it could be another random sample of possibly different size. Yeah. So they'll take another sample, and then they will um, see how many have the marking, and then um, they'll set up a proportion with that information, and they'll add uh, the number, the estimate. Yes, that's using the formula that we described earlier, right? So it's a very interesting idea, like how you can estimate the value that you're looking for by comparing the sample proportion with the population proportion. That's the key idea. So great, but uh, does this work all the time? Not always, because it could, um, there's some times that it might not work, because so what if like some of the animals die or if there's like new animals that are born? That's right, so uh, we want to make sure it's like a closed population, the closed ecosystem where it's going to work. So there's no uh, uh, change in the yeah. actual data, right? Yeah. So there's no uh, fish that's entering or fish that's leaving. Yeah, like emigration or immigration. Correct, yes. And also we have to make sure that uh, we draw reasonably big sample size. Yeah. Otherwise, we might get some incorrect answers. Yeah. Right? It might not be accurate enough. That's right. The so larger the sample, the better more accurate. The, the better the approximation. That's yeah. correct. So after we fi um, finished our capture and release method, we were left with an estimate of 2,250. So um, we, but then to check how accurate it was, we used another method called the scooping method. And we... Um, first took one scoop and we counted how many were in that scoop and then found out how many scoops would be the entire jar. Yeah, and, and I think uh, the number of beads in each scoop came out to be about 60, 60 and uh, how many uh, scoopfuls, that's 40. Yeah. So that means the total number is approximately 2,400. 2, yeah. So that means that our caption release estimate was only off by uh, 150. Correct. So the capture and release method, uh, even though it's not accurate, uh, it's quite effective because the scooping method is not going to work for estimating the size of uh, uh, lions in African safari or fish in a pond. So I think it's still pretty interesting and elegant technique. And uh, 
there are other versions of the capture and release method uh, which will give you more accurate answer but i think this is just the tip of an iceberg i hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video